I have got a couple of proprietary format XLIF files here that I want to import into an English Polish project. So let's see how that goes. I'll go up to import with options. And oh, whoops, I'm looking in the folder, but I don't see the files. Well, I'll go over here and tell MemoQ to show me all the files, not just the ones that it recognizes and supports. Okay, and here are those two files. Let's go ahead and widen this a bit more so I can see the whole file names. They are rather long. Uh, if you have somebody who is sending you files with very long names like this, you might have to be careful of uh, the paths that you have specified for the defaults in MemoQ because if the path name and the file name with extension uh, start getting close to about 256 characters, you might get in trouble. But anyway, we'll worry about that another time. So we've got these two files selected. Let's just click open. Oh dear. It doesn't know what kind of filter to use for them. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and just tell it that we want to use XLIF. But of course, this is the point at which most people would probably already give up. So let's look down and see what our options are for here. Oh, we've got XLIF 1 and XLIF 2 and XLIF 2. Oh, boy. Well, I already looked inside the files, so I know that this is the XLIF 1.2 specification, so I'll use the XLIF 1 filter. I'm just going to go with the defaults for right now, and we'll take a look at the data. Okay, click OK. Well, they came in. They came in with a bunch of content, and they seem to be fully translated. Well, let's have a quick look. All right. Well, it looks Polish. Um, I don't know why it's all marked as confirmed, but uh, right. OK, well, that looks pretty good. I suppose this is a review job. So I will go ahead and close this. It looks to me like that way of importing will work. But it's a bit of a nuisance, isn't it? There's got to be an easier way. And in fact, there is a couple of easier ways. In the resource console, under project templates, I'm going to create something to deal with those. I'm going to create a new template. And I'll just call it TXLF Importer. Select it. And click Edit. Now, there are no settings whatsoever in this project except to record the document version history. OK, there are no default behaviors for inserting heavy resources. Um, there's essentially no settings. But we're going to go under the settings. And here in the language independent resources, I'm going to do something special for filter configurations. And I'm going to specify something for every file with the extension TXLF. We just need to find the XLIF1 filter. Oh, so hold that thought. We're going to click OK. And I'm going to go to Filter Configurations. And I am going to create a new one.
and I'm just going to call it TXLF. And I'm going to use the XLIF1 filter for that. Now let's have a quick look at that one. I'll filter for it. There it is. And click edit. Okay, right now it has all of the default settings for the XLIF1 filter. But if I find that I need to make some modifications because of peculiar properties inside of these files, I can go back to this custom configuration later and make those changes. So in that sense, it's actually kind of a good thing that the template is requiring a custom filter configuration, even if that custom configuration is just the default in the beginning. Okay, now we're going to go back to our project templates. And here's our TXLF importer. We will click edit once again. Go back to the settings. And now we'll choose this. Okay, we'll go ahead and close. And now I want to create a new project from the template that I just made. So I will go ahead and skip over these documents for the moment. And I will choose this particular template that I just created. My source language in this case will be English. Let me take generic English. And my target language that I want in this case will be Polish. So I'm going to go find that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll simply click finish for now. Oh, I have to give it a name. Now I'll finish. Now that we've finished, we can get started. So I will go up and I will tell it to import the folder structure. And this is the folder structure that I will choose. Oh, there's a lot of other stuff in there that I don't want. So I'm going to look. Let's look at the end of this list of file formats that can be imported. There's quite a few here. Unfortunately, it's not possible to restrict that list. But all the way at the end, you can see that TXLF has been added because that's part of the template for this project. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the rest of that and it should clean up my import list somewhat. Or I could simply select it all and then type in star.txlf and I would get only those files in the list below. Okay, now we've just got that. Let's click OK. I forgot to update. Let's try that again. Import folder structure. Star.txlf. Update. Find the folder that I want. And there are the two files that I would like to import. 
click OK. There they are. And as you can see, my custom filter configuration is selected. I click OK and I can import the files. And there they are as before. OK, so by creating a template with the appropriate configuration for your unknown extension and by selecting the folder structure that contains the files you want to import, you can easily import them to your MemoQ project. But actually, this case is a little bit more interesting than I let on at first because these TXLF files are actually contained within another kind of file. They are part of GLP packages. Let's have a closer look at those. There we go. GLP packages. Well, like most packages, those are just big zip files. And recent versions of MemoQ have a zip filter that will let us deal with those. So let's go ahead and make one of those. Again, we're going to go up to the Resource Console and we're going to go to Filter Configurations. We're going to create a new filter configuration and we're going to call it GLP Grabber. And we're going to use as the basis for our work the zip filter. Okay, let's go ahead and filter. Here we are. Edit. And here, I want to put in my custom extension. Okay. Now, I could add some files for a preview just to show you where this is going. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, we want to unmark this option to import files which are not defined by patterns. This way, it will ensure that only the TXLF files will be imported and not the original source files, the XML file, and the others you see. Now you can see that only these two files will be imported. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And it looks like our custom filter GLP grabber is ready to go. Now let's go ahead and add that to the template. Now we go back up to the resource console, to the project templates, and to our template TXLF importer. We will edit that once again. Go back to our favorite place in settings. And here we're going to add another thing, star.glp. And there we are going to use our GLP grabber filter that we have. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and create a new project with my updated template project from template and here we are English and Polish it remembers the last settings that I used we'll simply click finish oh right and we click finish now Import, 
Let's try import with options. Okay, as you can see, we cannot see the GLP file because that is not a supported extension. So once again, we would have to go to all files in order to see this file. Let me put it into a folder. Okay, so now I will import folder structure. Select the folder structure that has the file of interest. And there it is, that GLP file. Click OK. And now we've imported that curious package along with the content that we specified. And that's all there is to creating your own custom filter in MemoQ for unknown packages.